Chapter 11, Preparations 1440 September 21 th, 2019 CE, 0720, Mid-Hour, Quiet 113, 195 A, Pentagon, United States of America, Formidan Continent. What? You are now the commander of the U.S. New World Command. Well you see General Thompson, we don't have military bases around the world anymore, so we can't have region-specific combatant commands as we did in the old world. Basically, this command is for our military operations that are not in the United States or the Northern Frontier, which is U.S. territory now. Um, I'm honored to be appointed to this position, Mr. President, but may I ask a question? Go ahead. Why me? I mean we have other great generals that have lost their positions because of the sudden transfer to this world. I believe there are four other great commanders that can fill that position. This time, General Marx responded. We believe that you are the most suitable. The Middle East has been in a state of constant war for years. You have the most experience with operations dealing with fighting the enemy. Not training and practice like the European Command or the Indo-Pacific Command and not minor operations like the Southern Command or the African Command, but actual major operations and combat. General Thompson thought about it for a bit. Then I understand General, Mr. President, and I will carry out my duties. Now, the President and I have been looking at and discussing plans to carry out an attack on BAME. We want to completely knock out the BAME first. General Marx shuffled through documents before continuing. The good news is that we have a lot of intelligence on the enemy we are facing. The Magasians were happy to give us information about their enemies. Beginning with the BAME. The BAME's technology is less advanced than the Machians and is on PAR with an average advanced country during the 1700s. Their population is very small at around 10 million people. On the sea, their navy consists of around 300 ships of the line, actually, that should be about 280 now. They vary from being equipped with 50 guns to 100 guns. Their calibers mainly consist of 18-pounders, 24-pounders, and 36-pounders. On land, their army is about 300,000 strong and uses muskets, horse cavalry, and a varying caliber range of cannons. We will be facing wooden forts and linear tactics. In the air, they have virtually no air force. To General Thompson, the prospect of fighting a war against an 18th century country seemed unneeded. Do we actually need to fight a war against them? Isn't it a bit unnecessary seeing that they aren't a major threat to us? They are less armed than even the minor terrorist groups that I had experienced in the Middle East. Actually, we are hoping to just subdue them. Missile strikes, drone strikes, and airstrikes on their military and political facilities should get the job done. If we are able to take out the king and his heirs, then their country would be completely leaderless. The only reason that we are occupying them is to reform their government and gain the ability to build military bases on their land. That will help us greatly in our offensive on the mock. Then what if we don't take out the king with the strikes? Or all of his heirs? Attacks from the air won't always get their target. I have experienced this many times. If we don't, let's hope that their king or heir is wise enough to understand the position he is in. We can literally rain down fire from the skies whenever and wherever we want. If not, then we would have to conduct an actual full-scale invasion. Then we will have to prepare for an occupation nonetheless. Do we have any information on the mock? General Marx pulled out some photos that were copies of what the Magasians had shown to diplomat Underwood. The mock is a bit more complicated. They have technology similar to an early 20th century European country. They have a population of about 70 million with an army of around 1.5 million strong. Their navy is made up of about 200 ships made up of dreadnoughts, cruisers, and destroyers. Their air force is made up of around 3,000 biplanes and bombers. Their army uses rifles, artillery, and tanks. According to the Magasians, most of the Machian army are based near the border of the Magasians. About 25% of the 1.5 million strong army is scattered in bases around the country and not near the border. 
Another important thing is that according to the Magasians, the Machians have a complicated hierarchy that allows them to function even if their emperor and his heirs are dead. Shouldn't we do a two-pronged attack? Strike both the Machians and Bame at the same time so they have no time to react. We will be doing something like that. However, the strikes on the Machians will be limited. Our aircraft carriers don't have enough firepower to completely destroy the Machians. We will need more air power to conduct an intensive attack on the Mach. In the old world, we are able to launch a full-scale air campaign in two countries. But this world is different, we don't have air bases around the world that allow us to do consistent airstrikes. We need to construct quick airfields in BAME which can provide us with extra ground support and air superiority. How about our bombers? Can't they be used to neutralize the Mach? We do have a total of 152 bombers but the logistics required for us to get some of those bombers to the Mach Imperium and back is complicated if not near impossible. The Mach Imperium is more than 6,000 miles away. Even with the B-52H that has a range of 8,800 miles, the highest range out of all our bombers, returning would be impossible since our tankers only have at most a range of 1,500 miles. It could only work if we had the MQ-25 Stingray in operation since they can be launched off carriers. The Stingray's first flight was planned to be two days ago but it got pushed to a later date because of our transfer to this world. Although even if we had the MQ-25 Stingray able to fly, it is still under development. I see. Is it possible to ask the Magasians for assistance since they are the Machians' sworn enemy? They don't seem to appreciate foreign troops in their land. I see, as usual with any country. 1250 September 22, 2019 CE. 0625, mid-hour, quiet 114. 195 A. Tampa, Florida, United States of America, Four Maiden Continent. General Abrams Thompson arrived at the MacDill Air Force Base, the old headquarters of the U.S. Central Command, which is now the headquarters of the U.S. New World Command. Right now, General Thompson was preparing for a naval battle. The Machians had threatened to send another invasion fleet if the United States did not surrender within 24 hours. That 24 hour was up. Originally there were plans to launch an attack before the Machians could assemble their fleet but it was scratched. It was not that the United States was unable to do it. The United States could. There were three Marine Expeditionary Units in North Carolina that could mobilize in less than a day and the US Navy was always mobilized. It was that it didn't make much sense to rush things. The Machian Navy was at most a light threat. The only reason that it was even a light threat was that there was a tiny chance that if the entire Machian Navy of around 200 ships were sent to attack the US, some of their ships could get through and attack a city. In reality, they can't be considered a threat at all since it was highly unlikely that the Machian will use their entire navy to attack the United States. The Machian depended on those ships for defense, so there was no need for a rapid response. The U.S. Marines should be ready within a few days or a week most. The U.S. Army is also mobilizing but that would take around a month. Currently, the plan was to wait for the second Machian fleet to attack, repel that attack, and then go on the offensive. General Thompson was quite sure that the Machian fleet would try to attack near Florida again since the Machians don't know the actual size of the United States. Random Bar in Industropolis, Mach Imperium Two somewhat drunk and somewhat sober men were sitting at a table and talking about random subjects. Hey interesting thing today, I heard from one of my friends, you know, Tiberius. You know him right. Ah, uh, nothing comes to mind. That navy person who's my friend. Huh, yeah, you have talked about him before right? The one holds some position in the navy. Yeah, that person? Okay so remember how everyone was talking about a new country in Formiden. I do vaguely, what was it called again? Eee, not sure. But you do know right. Didn't we send something there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I wanted to talk about. So, have you heard of the rumors that are spreading? What rumors? The ones, ones, the about, 
the fleet getting wiped out. What fleet? That's what we sent to the country in Formiden, I think we sent a couple of Desmond class ones there too. Ha that country must be doomed. The man started wagging his finger. No no no, the rumors. What rumors? You have been saying rumor this rumor that. The fleet got wiped. I said it earlier. That's impossible. There were Desmond class ships. Yeah that's what I thought too and I asked Tiberius about it. What did he say? It's all true, we lost that entire fleet. To what? The Magasians. No, that new country. Do I look dumb to you? There's no way we lose to a new country. You don't believe me? Didn't you notice about words of a naval build-up at one of the port cities? We are trying again with a bigger fleet. Whatever, there's no chance a new country will defeat us. They are just baseless rumors. 0900 September 25th. 2019 CE 0430 early hour quiet 117 195 a Tampa Florida United States of America for Maiden continent General Abrams Thompson was looking at satellite imagery of a Mackian port which showed a buildup of Mackian warships it was a great satellite image with no cloud cover Two dreadnoughts, two battleships, a battlecruiser, and 15 light cruisers or destroyers. Seems like the Machians didn't lie about a bigger fleet. Probably a few more days before they are at full strength. Well, more target practice for the Navy. General Thompson was preparing an invasion-slash-occupation force for the BAME. The Marines had already begun organizing at various ports on the East Coast. The logistics needed to pull this off will take some time. A bit less than two weeks before the planned amphibious assault. 1000 September 25, 2019 CE. 0800, mid-hour, quiet 117, 195 A. Primopolis, Septentrio Magus Imperium, Domum, Imperatoria, Continent. Emperor Arstant was in his throne room among various advisors. Robertus was beside him. Your Majesty, they may have powerful weapons but do they have enough of them? War isn't just about how good your weapons are, they are also about how much of them you have. The Imperial Military Advisor, Caius Igenus, was arguing with the Emperor about what they should do because of the war between the Americans and Machians. From the observations of our diplomatic team, their weapons may be advanced enough that quantity doesn't matter. But is there any exact figures? It is possible that they only have a few of these weapons to protect themselves. Sadly, it seems that the Americans are unwilling to give out any military information to us. All we know is that they easily won against a Machian fleet without taking any casualties by using weapons beyond our capabilities. Then we should not take any action. We will endanger ourselves if we do. Caius did not trust that a new nation could have the capability to easily defeat the mock. He also didn't believe the new nation's claim that it was transported here from another world. That just did not adhere to the law of physics and magic. Chapter 12, Beginning of the End of the Mock Imperium 0200 September 30, 2019 CE 0400, Early Hour Quiet 122 th, 195 a. Port Bannock, Mock Imperium, Domum, Imperatoria, Continent. On a clear and sunny early morning, a task force consisting of four Desmond class battleships, five old battleships, a battlecruiser, ten heavy cruisers, three light cruisers, twenty destroyers, and five troopships carrying 1,500 men each. A total of 7,500 infantry, left port. If this fleet was lost, that would be a big blow to the Machian Navy. They had already sped up ship production in order to replace the losses from Force A. A few sailors were a bit apprehensive, most of them were very confident. Rumor had spread like wildfire about the complete defeat of Force A, the naval squadron sent to occupy the new nation on Formido. Most people ignored it as baseless rumors or Magasian's propaganda. Most of the sailors on Force B, what this task force was called, believed that they were just reinforcements because of the large amounts of natives that needed to be subjugated. 
They believed that Force A was able to occupy a small part of the natives' country but the natives were counter-attacking with a huge quantity of ships and soldiers. They were heavily mistaken. Also, unbeknownst to them, they were being carefully observed and watched from a place beyond their wildest imaginations. A satellite in space took pictures of the port as the ships left. Admiral Spurious Nero was on the flagship, a Desmond-class battleship called the I.S. Julianus. The Admiral was secretly conversing with his other officers. We shall not repeat the mistakes of Force A. The honor of the Navy rests on our success. Don't worry Admiral, this is one of the biggest fleets dispatched ever since our last war with the Magasians. 1000 September 30, 2019 CE. 0500, early hour, quiet 122 th, 195 a. Tampa, Florida, United States of America, Formide and Continent. Various satellite images of the Mackian fleet were taken showing it departing the port. By estimating the speed through comparing satellite images taken at different times and looking at the direction of the ships, General Abram Thompson's staff was able to estimate the time it would take for it to reach the United States. A staff member was telling the general about this. It will take them about nine days to arrive off the shore of Florida. Nine days? It took them more than two weeks for the first time. There are no BAME ships accompanying them so they don't have to slow down. Five carrier strike groups are being deployed to meet the second invasion fleet. This consisted of five Nimitz-class aircraft carriers, 25 R. Lee Burke-class destroyers, five Ticonderoga cruisers, five Los Angeles-class attack submarines. They were also accompanied by Submarine Squadron 6 which consisted of six Los Angeles-class attack submarines and three Virginia-class attack submarines. This fleet is able to launch thousands of missiles and more than 200 F-18E-F Super Hornets. Only five aircraft carriers were deployed because most of the other aircraft carriers were under maintenance and won't be able to be deployed until 2020 and 2021. In Norfolk, Virginia, an amphibious ready group, ARG, was being prepared to strike the BAME and MOC. Amphibious assault ships, LHDs, amphibious transport docks, LPDs, and dock landing ships, LSDs, were being gathered. The Marine Corps was divided into four Marine Expeditionary Forces. An entire Marine Expeditionary Force was being prepared for the assault. The two Marine Expeditionary Force consisted of the 2nd Marine Division, the 2nd Marine Aircraft Wing, and the 2nd Marine Logistic Group. A Marine Expeditionary Force is able to sustain itself in combat without external assistance for a period of 60 days. October 3 ND, 2019 CE, and 3rd, 195 AE, somewhere in the ocean between the Machian Imperium and Formidon at night. It has been three days since Force B had set sail for the Formidon continent. Admiral Spurious Nero was planning ship formations for the invasion. The current plan was to first send forth the battleships and battlecruiser to clear out any ships that stand in the way, then the troop ships which will be guarded by the destroyers, light cruisers, and heavy cruisers will be behind the bigger ships. This way no surprise attack can occur. Unknown to them, this battle plan would be completely useless. Tomorrow will be the day that the power of the Machian navy was squashed like an ant under a boot. The fate of the Machian Imperium was sealed the day their first fleet tried to attack the United States. October 5, 2019 CE. End 5, 195 A. Somewhere in the ocean between the Machian Imperium and Formidon in the early morning. The U.S. fleet had earlier launched an E-2D Hawkeye an airborne early warning aircraft that was able to detect targets at ranges of excess 345 miles. The E-2D Hawkeye has now detected 47 signatures. The Mackian fleet. The Mackian have no idea what was about to hit them. A squadron of F-A-18E-F Super Hornets, 12 of them, with a cruise speed of 777 miles per hour lifted off from the USS Abraham Lincoln, CVN-72, each of them carrying four Harpoon missiles, Harpoon Block 2 RGM-84. 
A Harpoon missile has a range of around 80 miles and has a 500-pound warhead. Behind them, an EA-18G Growler electronic warfare aircraft lifted off. Equipped with an N-ALQ-122 communications countermeasure set and various other electronic warfare equipment, it could easily jam even the most advanced communication systems of the old world. At the same time, about 345 miles away from the U.S. fleet, there wasn't much to do on a week-long journey to the other side of the world. Some sailors were working. They were mopping the deck, cooking, doing maintenance, and various other things. Some sailors were playing. They had conversations and played card games and board games. No one expected anything to happen. What could happen? There was absolutely no navy in this world that can stand up to the mighty Machian navy. The Machians had the biggest ships with the biggest guns. Those that tried to attack them were fools. As the saying goes, Machia rules the waves. About 25 minutes later, around 70 miles away from the Machian fleet, firing all bruisers, in procession on each of the F-A-18E-F Super Hornets, four Harpoon missiles were launched. One of the Super Hornets shot three Harpoon missiles instead of four. A total of 47 missiles were headed for the Machian fleet. They streamed off from the wings of the Super Hornets and each headed for a different ship. The Harpoon missiles, with a speed of around 540 miles per hour, will reach their targets in just about 8 minutes. Around 7 minutes later, Flavius, a sailor on the IS Julianus who was noted for his very good eyes, noticed a small flying object skimming the sea. It was approaching the IS Viginti Duo, 22 in Latin. The names of Machian destroyers are numbers, a destroyer that was further ahead of them to the right, at incredible speeds. Hey, Metius, do you see that? What? Flavius, can't you see I'm busy here? Metius's back was turned and he was focused on mopping the deck. Before Flavius could say a retort, an explosion rocked the IS Viginti duo. Flavius was shocked. Metius turned around in surprise. What the hell was that? On the bridge of the IS Julianus. Everyone on the bridge of the IS Julianus was surprised. Right in front of their eyes, a destroyer had vaporized in an explosion. Wah! Wow. Even before Admiral Spurious Nero could question what had happened, more brilliant explosions reduced many more ships in front of them to nothing more than metal floating on the sea. Destroyers and light cruisers that were ahead of the fleet were instantly vaporized as if hit with hundreds of pounds of explosives that were traveling at high speeds. Sir, the IS Viginti Duo, Quadraginta Quat Tour, Triginta. Before the officer could even begin listing out the sunken, an explosion rocked the front of the IS Julianus. Admiral Nero clutched a side of the wall to prevent him from falling from the explosion. Is everyone okay? Only minor injuries on the bridge, Admiral. Damage report. Sir, the front of our ship is taking on a lot of water very quickly. The explosion opened a hole in the keel of our ship. Are those reparable? The repair crew is trying sir. What in the Emperor's name attacked us? I don't see any enemy ships, unless they are enemy submarines. Get the destroyers to start dropping depth charges? We have enemy submarines near us. Um, sir, we have no destroyers left. How many of our ships are left undamaged? It seems like some of our ships are. More explosions rocked the fleet. None of our ships are undamaged. Once hit, the light cruisers, troop ships, and destroyers were instantly turned into pieces of metal floating on the sea. Heavy cruisers and the old battleships fared a bit better. They usually had an entire area of the ship gone where the explosion happened. The battlecruiser and the Desmond classes had gaping holes where the explosion occurred. Because harpoon missiles are sea skimming missiles, ships that were hit and not vaporized started to take on a lot of water. The repair crew is now saying that the damage is unrepairable? We have to abandon the ship? Get to the lifeboats. We need to telegram headquarters first? Tell the telegram operator to warn the emperor of the situation. An unknown force has destroyed Force B and may threaten the Imperium. Unknown to the Admiral, that telegram message will never reach the Imperium. An EA-18G somewhere far off was jamming the telegram. 
In less than 45 minutes, the U.S. fleet was able to disable the entire Mackian fleet of 47 ships. Force B ceased to exist. At this time, the Mackian High Command had no idea what just occurred. Battle of the New World Atlantic slash Imperium Eastern Sea. Mackian Casualties. Sunk slash Dead. Four Desmond class battleships. Five old battleships. One battlecruiser. Ten heavy cruisers. Three light cruisers. Twenty destroyers. Five troopships. About 16,500 dead. 3,500 from not being able to get on a lifeboat. Survivors. 12,000 men. American casualties. 0. 0100 October 6, 2019 CE. 0430, early hour, and 6, 195 AE. Industropolis, Mach Imperium, Domum, Imperatoria, Continent. Emperor Industras was grumbling a lot. His sleep was disturbed by his wife, the Empress, and he wasn't happy. Well granted, he overslept by an hour. A servant knocked and entered the office of Emperor Industras. Your Majesty, we have a minor problem. What is it? The Emperor sounded very grumpy. Um, according to the Naval Office, we lost contact with Force B. It's been about 12 hours and they have yet to respond to the nightly telegram. Could it have been a malfunction? A storm. It has been 12 hours and the probability of a malfunction on all the ship's telegram is highly unlikely. What does the head admiral say about this? It's gone. Just like that? Poof. Disappeared. Eh, that is what he is saying. You expect me to believe that? Just tell the naval office that they are overthinking. There's nothing that could sink that huge of a fleet. How many days has it been? Five days, that is in the middle of the ocean. Do you expect the Magasians to do that? Well, sir, um, some in the naval office believe it might be the Americans. The Emperor was looking more and more miffed. He just wanted to close his eyes and sleep some more. Americans? This far in the ocean? Luckily stumbling upon the fleet? Sinking said entire fleet. Yes T.H.A. Without us receiving a distress call. Um, yeah. Tell the naval office to stop wasting my time. It's just a malfunction in some things or something. The wireless telegraphy is new. The servant looked down, not wanting to further anger him. Understood. The U.S. fleet was about less than two days away from the BAME. Chapter 13, Invasion of the BAME. 0330 October 8, 2019 CE. 0446, Early Hour, and 8, 195 AE. Asian Port. BAME Kingdom, BAME Continent. Agent Port, the capital of the BAME Kingdom is bustling with people. If it has to be compared to a city on Earth, it would be quite similar to London in the 18th century. It is considered a grand city in this world. Though inferior to Machian and Magasian cities, it is much better than the cities in the rest of the world. One of the grandest structures in the city is the Kingdom Palace which is situated on a hill in the middle of the city. Most of the agent porters have just eaten breakfast and are starting the day. Some are opening up their shops and others are visiting stores. In nearby tea houses, conversations were starting. Some talked about everyday business, the newest gossip, or political subjects. When it came to politics, discontent with the government was at an all-time high. This is because of the recent loss of 15,000 BAME soldiers on their expedition with the mock against a new nation on the Formido continent. Mothers and wives are grieving because of this. In one of the tea houses, there is a big group talking about this. We need to change. We are basically reduced to a territory of the mock. There was no reason for us to participate in that stupid invasion. I lost my son in that. The man who said that looked very gloomy. He was a good boy, you know, a good boy, just wanted to serve his country, not the damn mock. Another man joined in after gulping down his beer. Well, we can't change anything. I mean people are happy I guess. There are those that are okay with the Machians. We aren't actually experiencing any war in our country. Things are peaceful and everyone lives a good life. Going against the Machians won't be wise in the end. 
but the price of that is to send our young men out to die for another goddamn country, or to lower our prices in trade with the Machians, or to treat Machian visitors like the upper class. Everything is fucking determined by the Machians, our laws, our lives, our survival, everything. Won't it be better if we could you know choose our leader, a strong and able leader that is willing to listen to us. I believe that the government should serve the people since it depends on them. The government forcing us to do what a majority of us don't like is absurd. Our king is not listening to us at all. We have inalienable rights that our current government keeps on ignoring. Choosing our leader, the government serving us, unalienable rights. Have you been reading books by the philosopher Holden Wolf? What if I am? You know those books are banned. Well, we are talking about topics that can get us in trouble, and not the regular trouble. Yeah, I swear, one of these days, our blind following of the Machians will doom us. That's probably very far of. A massive explosion cut him off. What was that explosion? People rushed out to see what had just happened. Towards the Kingdom Palace, black smoke is seen rising. At that time, Ford Age in Port. Since the capital city of Bame was so close to the sea, a massive fort garrisoning 30,000 soldiers, a tenth of the entire Bame military, was put a couple of miles out of the city and near the sea. It was one of the biggest forts on the Bame continent. A soldier was patrolling on top of the wall facing the sea. While patrolling, he noticed a low fast-flying object that was headed directly towards him. He hurriedly got off the wall and into the fort to alert the others. There's something coming towards us? I don't know what it is. Get the commander. All of a sudden an explosion can be heard. And then another one closer. That was the last thing he heard. All across the Bame Kingdom, Bame Forts were experiencing similar events. Less than an hour earlier. Less than 500 miles from the Bame shore. Smoke streaked towards the sky as RGM-109E Tomahawk land attack missiles, Block 4 TLAME launch into the sky from Arleigh Burke-class destroyers, Ticonderoga-class cruisers, Virginia-class attack submarines, and Los Angeles-class attack submarines. The Tomahawk cruise missile has a range of 1,000 miles and has a 1,000-pound warhead. The Arleigh Burke-class destroyers and Ticonderoga-class cruisers have Mark 41 VLS, vertical launch systems, that fire missiles. Most are carrying evolved Sea Sparrow missiles, ESSMs, anti-submarine rockets, ARSOCs, Tomahawk cruise missiles, RIM-174 standard missile 6S, SM-6S, and RIM-67 standard missile 2S, SM-2S. The Ticonderogas are also carrying some Harpoon missiles. Most of the Arleigh Burks and Ticonderogas are carrying 32 Tomahawk missiles each. One of the Virginia-class attack submarines and all 11 Los Angeles-class attack submarines has 12 VLS tubes that are carrying a Tomahawk missile each. The last two Virginia-class each has two Virginia payload tubes, VPTs, carrying six Tomahawk missiles each. A hundred Tomahawks were launched at major fortifications, important military offices, and important government buildings. The carrier strike fleet currently is in charge of destroying defenses, destroying centers of command, and warning the civilian population of the BAME. Less than an hour behind them is the amphibious ready group of the two Marine Expeditionary Force. It is the biggest deployment of units since the Gulf War. The Gulf War deployment is still bigger than this deployment since it consisted of an entire Marine Expeditionary Force with an extra Marine Expeditionary Brigade attached to it. Because of the shrinkage in size of the amphibious assault fleet since the Gulf War, the entire current U.S. amphibious assault fleet was being used to transport the two MEF. Twelve dock landing ships consisting of four Harpers Ferry class and eight Whidbey class, nine amphibious transport docks all of which are San Antonio class, and nine amphibious assault ships consisting of one America class and eight WASP class. Even with all these ships, the U.S. Marines had to work out some extra space in order to fit the entire MEF. In total, the two MEF has about 40,000 Marines. Half of the Marines are part of the 2nd Marine Division, 
The 2nd Marine Division is headed by a headquarters battalion and has a lot of subordinate units. There are 30 M1A1 Abrams tanks of the 2nd Tank Battalion. They used to have 58 M1A1S but two companies had been deactivated. There are also LAV 25S, Light Armored Vehicles, of the 2nd Light Armored Reconnaissance Battalion, AAV-7S, Amphibious Assault Vehicles, of the 2nd Assault Amphibian Battalion, Engineering Equipment from the 2nd Combat Engineer Battalion, and the M777A2 Artillery of the 10th Marine Regiment. In addition to this is the infantry from the 2nd Marine Regiment, 6th Marine Regiment, 8th Marine Regiment, and 2nd Recon Battalion. Although the infantry mostly uses Humvees, they also have some JTLVs, Joint Tactical Light Vehicles, and MRAPs, Mine Resistant Ambush Protected. The rest of the two MEF is the 2nd Marine Logistics Group and the 2nd Marine Aircraft Wing the Logistics Group with logistical vehicles such as Oshkosh Logistic Vehicle System Replacement and Medium Tactical Vehicle Replacement. The aircraft wing has aircraft such as the AV-8B2 Harriers, F-A18A++-C-D Hornets, F-35BS, MV-22B Ospreys, CH-53E Super Stallions, A-1W Super Cobras, and A-1Y Venoms. On the USS Wasp, Staff Sergeant Nick Gray, a commander of an M1A1 Abrams, is getting his tank crew ready for an amphibious landing from an LCAC landing craft air cushion. Their tank is supposed to be one of the first to hit the beach. Listen up boys. We don't know what will happen once we hit the beach but the moment we do, we are driving forward and shooting anyone that looks like a soldier that isn't ours. Specialist Uma Connolly, the driver, laughed a bit. Lighten up commander, I heard they only have muskets. We don't even need to shoot. I can drive over them. Just be ready. About 15 minutes after missile launches, multiple squadrons of F-A18E-F Super Hornets are being launched from the aircraft carriers. Most are carrying four Harpoon missiles each in order to strike the BAME Navy ships that are around the BAME and docked at BAME ports. Some of the squadrons are carrying PDU-5B dispenser units. 0400 October 8, 2019 CE. 0500 Early hour, and 8th, 195 A. Agent Port, BAME Kingdom, BAME Continent. People felt an air of worry, their capital city had just been attacked by something. Most did not know if this affected them. There seemed to have been multiple explosions but they were far away. All of a sudden, there is a deafening roar coming from the sky. People looked up and around until someone noticed multiple arrow-like flying objects approaching at an insane speed. Most looked with astonishments and didn't talk. Their eyes follow the aircrafts as they flew over them. Then something dropped from one of the aircraft. A few moments earlier, closer to the Kingdom Palace, General Conan Heyman set up a base of operations outside of the Agentport news station. He was lucky. He had been away from the military office when the attack occurred. When he had rushed back to the military office after seeing black smoke rise from it, he found it was completely destroyed. Right now, he is gathering nearby soldiers, military officials, and guards in order to keep the peace. He had also sent a messenger on a horse to Fort Agentport to inquire for reinforcements. The reason that he set up a base of operations out of the main news station of Agent Port was that it had one of the only two telegrams in the city. The other one was in the Kingdom Palace and now buried under rubble. He preferred the one in the Kingdom Palace since it connected directly to the Emperor of the Mock Imperium. The one he has is connected to a news station in Industropolis. Military officials at the base of operations are arguing. Does anyone witnessed what happened? It just exploded. Cannons couldn't have possibly done this. They were disturbed by the same thing that attracted the attention of the agent porters further out. General Haymond looked into the sky. Aircraft? Are those Machians? I knew it, General. It was an attack made by the Machians. Those don't look like Machian planes to me, Captain. One of the aircraft is dropping something. In an F-A18E-F. Bomb dropped? 
A PDU-5B dispenser unit detached from the F-A-18 and started falling towards the capital city of the BAME Kingdom. The PDU-5B then exploded into nearly 60,000 pieces of paper. They were leaflets, back on the ground. A leaflet floated down near the base of operations. General Conan Haymond picked it up and read it. It was in the Imperial language but he was able to read it since the Imperial language is a required language to learn in school. Attention BAME, this is a message from the government of the United States of America. Our nation was transported to this world onto a continent called Formidon. We came in peace and tried to establish relations with native countries of this world. However, we were threatened and attacked by your country and the mock. In order to ensure peace, we will be conducting an occupation to replace your government. We request you surrender and do not resist. Any resistance will be met with force. We guarantee that non-combatants will not be harmed. We guarantee the fair treatment of civilians. We also have 15,000 prisoners of your country. We guarantee their safe return after the war with your nation is over. 0440 October 8, 2019 CE 0620 and 8, 195 A. Industropolis, Mach Imperium, Domum, Imperatoria, Continent. Extra, extra, BAME invaded. King Arthur is dead. Extra, extra. Once the news station received the telegram from the BAME Kingdom, it immediately started printing out the story. In the palace, the news reached the Emperor in no time. What happened to Force B? Your Majesty, we have lost all contact with them. Emperor Indistros looked down at the table with an angry expression. Military advisor slash head general Flavius Tulas strode up next to the Emperor. We need to strike the Tulas. You got US into this? This is all your fault. Your Majesty, I. We lost half of our fleet. And even now you want US to attack. But I. Guards throw him in the dungeon. But. No wait, wait, your majesty, I was just trying, get off me, unhand me you vixen, you were majesty. The military advisor was dragged out of the room. The emperor was unnerved about the proximity of an unknown enemy. Sure the Magasians were a fearsome enemy, but they were a known enemy that had known weaknesses. The Americans, on the other hand, have somehow sunk many of the finest ships of the mock. Prepare defenses? Prepare the navy, prepare soldiers and trenches. What about the BAME sir? Leave them to be pillaged. We have no obligation to protect them. But your majesty, the first emperor declared a never-ending treaty with the BAME after the BAME helped us in supplies during the great civil war. That was more than a century ago. The only reason that I continued relations with the BAME is that there was no reason to cut it off. What matters most now is that we repel the possible coming invasion. Once we do, we can go back to the offensive. Chapter 14, Agent Port Secured 0430 October 8, 2019 CE 0515, Early Hour, and 8, 195 A. Mustin, BAME Kingdom, BAME Continent. Agent Port isn't an actual port as the name states. Its close proximity to the sea gave it that name. The town of Miston, more well known as the Gateway to Agent Port, is the actual port. There is a main road from the town that leads directly to Agent Port which is only a few miles away. Fort Agent Port, which is now a steaming pile of rubble, is a few miles east of the town. Civilians are looking out of the town towards the port. Most of the BAME ships of the line had been destroyed by the flying arrows. Now they aren't looking at the destroyed ships but at the incredible scene that was unfolding in front of their eyes. Many ships and weird flying machines are coming towards them. In the sea, AAV-7S and MV-22B Ospreys make up the vanguard. Behind them are LCACs and LCUs carrying Humvees, LAV-25S and M1A1 Abrams. Nick looks through the periscope of the Abrams. Once the beach is secured, we are moving up into the town. Be prepared for any hostiles. Sergeant Dillian Avery, the gunner, commented on that. At least this should be easier than Iraq. No RPGs. No IEDs. Nothing can threaten this baby. 
Private First Class Brian Marks, the loader, piped up. Ever heard of Murphy's Law? Nope. Well, it states that everything that could go wrong will go wrong. I read about it online. Our intel tells us that these guys are only armed with cannons at the most. Our intel tells us jack shit. I have read the history. Bay of Pigs, Pearl Harbor, 9-11. Nick hasn't really listened to what has just been said between Dillian and Brian and interrupts them. Get ready boys. Near Fort Agenport. The horse rider sent by General Haymond is looking towards the sea. He notices the landings and instantly gets back on his horse. On the beach. Forward, Connolly. The LCAC had landed and the metal holding back the beast opened. All around them, there are marines pouring out of AAV-7S and MV-22B Osprey's landing and unloading troops. The beachhead was secured. Connolly, get us to the outskirts of the town. We will be followed by Lavs and a couple of other Abrams. Dillian shoot if there are any hostiles. I don't care if they are armed with swords. Just shoot them cause they will endanger the infantry. Nick hoped to God that there isn't anybody stupid enough to try and attack them. Especially if the said attacker was only armed with a musket. 0450 October 8, 2019 CE. 0525, early hour, and 8th, 195 A. Agent Port, BAME Kingdom, BAME Continent. The horse rider arrived back to the base of operations at breakneck speeds. General? General? Invaders? They are arriving in tanks and aircraft. Where are the reinforcements from Fort Agent Port? The entire fort is gone. The same thing to what happened to the Kingdom Palace. General Haymond slammed his fist on the table. What are the numbers? I don't know sir. I got back here as soon as I saw their machines. There seem to have been 40 or so aircraft and tanks. Hundreds of soldiers. General Haymond wasn't sure what to do. He had only about a thousand soldiers and guards. Not enough to repel any substantial invasion force. Especially when the enemy had advanced weaponry. General Haymond sighed. This was the capital city. He had to defend it no matter what. Gather the troops. We will stop them at the gates of our city. For the kingdom. A few minutes earlier, Mustin, BAME Kingdom, BAME Continent. Nick's M1A1 Abrams arrives outside of the town. It is awfully quiet. Connolly, move slowly forward. Damn these precautions. I can drive full speed towards their city. Slowly. Dillian laughs. Chill, Connolly. This ain't the Gulf War. The Abrams slowly edges forward as Nick observes the surroundings. Seems clear. The infantry can secure the town. A few minutes later, the Abrams situated themselves at the end of the town. The town had already been secured by infantry. Most of the residents are viewing them through partially closed windows and doors. More units are being landed onto the beaches as time went by. Brian snorts. Well, that wasn't much. Could they have already surrendered? Don't get your hopes up. Back in Iraq, we believed we won when we removed Saddam Hussein. Boy, were we wrong. Enough Iraq references, Dillian. Nick, we got any orders. We will be proceeding forward in a bit, Connolly. A few more minutes later, we are to get to the outskirts of the capital. Abrams, Lavs, and Humvees will follow. Hell yeah. Full speed ahead. Normal speed, Connolly. Ah, no fun, says Connolly jokingly. 0500 October 8, 2019 CE, 0530, early hour, and 8, 195 AE, Agent Port, BAME Kingdom, BAME Continent. They are approaching what seemed to be the outskirts of the city. Around them are still planes, but houses could be seen dot near the houses at the outskirts of Agent Port. The tanks are approaching. Get into formation. Our general's orders are clear, they shall not pass. At the entrance of Agent Port on the road that connected it to Miston, two preloaded three-pounders are suddenly rolled up out of the cover of the houses and onto the street. These cannons were kept in a guard armory in case of a mass uprising. Fire. One cannonball misses and struck the ground on the left of the tank. Dirt was thrown up into the air where it hit. The second one struck home. 
right on the front of the tank. It bounces off like a ping pong ball hitting a paddle. Reload, quickly. On each cannon, one of the cannon crew ran to the front of the cannon to clean it with a sponge. Inside the M1A1 Abrams, two cannons spotted. Load M1028. Loaded. An M1028 canister round flies out of the Abrams tank barrel and struck one of the cannons. Being on the receiving end of an American M1 Abrams is not a good experience. Wise men in the near future of this world will say that. The canister round explodes into hundreds of high-speed balls that take out both the cannons and their crews. It literally liquefied those in its radius. Dillian seems quite curious about what had just happened. I do have to say, much easier than taking out a man holding an RPG. I always wondered how a cannon would fare against modern armor. This is Armadillo 1. We ran into an ambush. Two cannons. Threats are neutralized. We are moving. After reporting what had just happened, Nick sighed. Connolly, forward. Be careful, we have probable hostels in the city. Nick feels worried but at the same time, not worried. It feels natural for him to feel a little jittery in entering an urban area with a tank. Tanks are not meant for urban warfare. His M1A1 isn't even equipped with Tusk, the urban survival kit. On the other hand, his enemies should have nothing that was capable of stopping the tank. Agent Port, BAME Kingdom, BAME Continent. A few minutes later, General, the cannons did nothing. The enemy convoy is advancing into the city. The general was looking at the map of the city. We'll stop them here and surround them. But general, we only have muskets. We can't just surrender the city without a fight. Outskirts of Agent Port. With infantry securing the back, the convoy of M1A1S, LAV-25S and Humvees moves into the city. Nick is looking through his periscope and tracking everything. The city is like an 18th century European city. The street is big enough to fit his Abrams quite well. Right now, the streets are empty and the houses have their windows and doors shut. They move at a brisk pace towards the center of the city. Nick hopes that the city would have no more hostels and that the populace would wisen up to the fact that they probably couldn't defeat this convoy. As they move forward, they enter what seemed to be a massive town square, that is full of soldiers. Further into Agent Port. Stop the tank? Don't fire. What? Why not? Let's see what they do. What they do. Nick, they are hostile enemies. Dillian, give them a chance. Give them a chance, are you crazy? They know they can't damage the tank with their guns. Opposing view. The metal sand colored beast in front of them came to a stop as if waiting to see what they would do. All of the BAME soldiers have never seen a tank. They only have heard of them and what they looked like. Some looked determined to defend their homes, others trembled a bit. Fire. They have already loaded their muskets so they raise their rifles to shoot in volley fire. Most of the musket balls fly straight at the tank. They all ping off. Inside the M1A1 Abrams. See, they opened fire? Nick. Use the machine guns, I don't want to cause any collateral with the 120. Got it. The M247.62 mm machine gun on the coaxial opens up. Flashes come out of the coaxial as Dillian swept right and left using the machine gun. The bullets rip through the unarmored yellow regimental coats of the BAME soldiers. Blood is flung everywhere and soldiers are torn apart. There is instant panic in the organized lines of BAME soldiers. Never before have they actually seen a weapon that could fire that fast. Many drop their muskets in an attempt to flee faster. Private Mark's size. Can't we just shoot in the air to scare them away? You won't feel bad for them when they are armed with RPGs. Just like in Iraq, give a damn civilian RPG and there they go murdering your friends says Dillian as he continues to operate the machine gun. Five minutes later, the square was deserted of any BAME soldiers. Only the dead remain. There is at least 40 dead. An entire line formation. 0520 October 8, 2019 CE. 0540, early hour, and 8, 195 A. A commanding officer who ran the moment his troops were fired upon, is huffing from the running when he got to General Haymond. General, 
We failed. What do you mean we failed? We couldn't stop them. How many men are left? Where are the survivors? There were 500 men at that square. I'm not sure. They had weapons similar to that of what I had read about the mock. We opened fire once they got into view but we stood no chance. The moment the tank opened fire, our lines were immediately scattered. Their gun tore through an entire line of soldiers. They ran? Are they still able to regroup? The commanding officer shook his head in a hurry. I don't know where they are. The line immediately disintegrated. General Haymond didn't know what to do. The Americans are already en route. Half of his force is already gone. There has been no response from the mocks. He can't defend the capital anymore. The only option he has is to retreat. 0535 October 8, 2019 CE. 0547, early hour, and 8, 195 A. Seems like this is the King's Palace. M1A1 Abrams, Lav 25S, and Humvees roll up around the destroyed Kingdom Palace. There is an extremely wide street that goes around the Kingdom Palace so the convoy could line upon it. Marines disembark from the Lavs and Humvees in order to secure the area. They have secured the political center of the BAME Kingdom. Elsewhere in BAME. Everywhere in BAME, citizens know that something is happening. Some have witnessed the destruction of a military base, others have heard of the destruction, and most have seen the flying arrows. How in a minute, without notice, and out of nowhere, the bases would just explode. Then the flying arrows came spreading messages of war. In a minor town in BAME, a man is sitting on a table with his hands holding his hand and looking at a very old book. He then looks up at the sky. Dear Goddess, are these the demons that you have warned about? They're flying arrows? They're weapons that come out of nowhere? Oh, Goddess, where is the hero that you have promised? If these ancient texts are true, you have promised to summon a hero in our time of need? I beg of you, as your devout follower to save humanity. Chapter 15, Mock. You're next. The invasion of BAME had gone on quite smoothly. With the capital already under American control and the king dead, the governors of the various BAME provinces have sent negotiators. In addition, cruise missiles have also done their jobs. Major forts that were housing tens of thousands of BAME soldiers had been wiped out at the beginning of the invasion. With less than 100,000 soldiers spread out across the continent, the governors knew that the only way to save themselves is through negotiations. Through the message sent by the Americans, they understood that the Americans just wanted to replace the government. If they could curry favor with these Americans, they might hopefully be able to become the next king. 2122 October 8, 2019 CE, 0141, New Hour, and 9th, 195 A. In a FOB, Forward Operating Base, outside of Agenport. Hey, Staff Sergeant, is this over already? Just the political shit now. You think we gonna get deployed to whatever that Imperium place is? What else are they gonna deploy, Private? Nick stamped out the cigarette butt after he threw it to the ground and walked away, leaving Brian behind who was leaning on the tank. Agent Port has been completely occupied by American soldiers. There was minimal damage because of the lack of resistance and the fact that the cruise missiles only targeted political and military valuable targets. Since the capital also served as the political center of this province, the entire province was politically under American control. 0630, mid-hour, and 11th, 195A, near the center of the Mach Imperium. A passenger steam train sped down the tracks. Inside the train on one of the seats, a soldier is penning a letter. Dear Mother, I hope you forgive me for not writing back to the various mail you have sent me. The trenches are not a comfortable place so I have rarely gotten the chance to sit down and write to you. I enjoyed reading the mails and I'm glad to hear that Aurora has been engaged. Tell her congratulations and that her older brother will be back soon. I hope that father and everyone else in the village is well. Mother, you do not have to worry about me. I'm currently being redeployed to the eastern beaches. I have always wanted to visit the beaches, I hope to enjoy my stay there. 
The trenches on the front were not the nicest places to be so I would probably enjoy this change. I hope you well and I will write again once I have more time. Love, your son, furious. Laughter can be heard in the other seats of the train as soldiers talked amongst themselves. Being on a train is a nice experience after being in the trenches for so long. Furious's friend, Mercator looked over his shoulder. A letter to your mother. Yeah. Furious slips the letter inside in his bag, nervous. Well somewhat. Who wouldn't? I heard that a third of the navy is destroyed and the BAME has been defeated. Furious, there's nothing to worry about. The emperor is calling for people to join the army for the defense of the empire. There should about an extra million ready men by the end of the season. The enemy can't stop us all. I heard that they are even constructing trenches and bunkers near the beaches. There are also rumors that the generals are thinking about pulling the land ships out of retirement. Industro is? I thought we had hundreds of Industro IIS. Why do we need Industro is? There's more armaments on them. I heard they are gonna be used like mobile bunkers. From what I heard, the enemy we will be facing is well armed. We are gonna need those extra Industros. Our enemy's navy must be very good to be able to easily squash ours. Mercator snickered. Our navy has been on their high horses for too long. About time someone knocked them off. Mercator, the navy is an integral part of our Imperium's defense. Without our navy, couldn't the enemy just bombard our positions? Heard that there is also the construction of naval fortifications with that in mind. Furious wasn't keen on the idea of using naval forts. Isn't that a strategy of those Magasians? It works for them. Why not use it? I hope we don't get positioned there. Rather not face the bombardment of a navy that can rival ours. Eh, don't worry. I heard that the recruits are going there. We are most likely going to the second line of defense. I think the emperor doesn't want to waste experienced soldiers if the recruits can stop them. Their navy might be good but that might not be true for their army. They are from a continent with no other adversaries. Maybe their navy is better since they are surrounded by the ocean. As I said, they can't stop us all. The size of our army would be similar to the invasion force we amassed in the last war about the Magus. At that time, 500,000 Machian soldiers are being transported like Furious and Mercator. 125,000 from the Mach Magus front and the rest are the ones based around the country. Industro IIS, Industro is, and artillery pieces can be seen on trains across the country as they race towards the same location. Across the Imperium, men are eagerly signing up for a chance to experience the glory of war. Rarely in history had the Mach Imperium called upon civilians for war. They had always had a huge and well-trained standing army against the Magus Imperium. Men were not interested in joining the army in peacetime because they have heard of the boredom of the trenches. Since there was no actual war occurring, the army was mostly guarding the border with the Magus. Now, they had a chance to experience the glory of war without the need to wait or train. 2000 October 12, 2019 CE, Tampa, Florida. Mr. President, Operation Rising Eagle is a complete success. We will be proceeding forward with Operation Diving Eagle. That's good to hear General. General Thompson put down the phone and sighed. Out of all the things that had to be done for Operation Rising Eagle, the main thing, the invasion, was the easiest. The logistics and political parts are the hardest. The logistics seem to be mostly solved at this point. The military sea lift command is now sending supplies to BAME. An airfield near Agentport is under hasty construction to bring in supplies by plane and add air support from the Air Force for the upcoming Operation Diving Eagle. It would require a month. Of course, this gave the enemy time to prepare their defenses. If they were facing modern foes, it wouldn't make sense to give the enemy time. General George S. Patton said, A good plan violently executed now is better than a perfect plan executed next week. For example, the Nazis gave the Soviets time before the Battle of Kursk when the Nazis decided to delay their offensive to build up tanks. This led to a Soviet victory. However, the Nazis were facing an opponent who was equal to them. 
the United States now faced an enemy woefully unprepared for modern warfare. That difference nulled any way for the Machians to gain an advantage by being more prepared. It actually might even help the United States. If they could wipe out the well-prepared Machian defense within days, then the morale of the Machians will plummet. Now the only issue was political. Who will replace the Baim king? It is obvious that the various governors of Baim want the title. Each came to Agenport with negotiators who brought gifts. On the plus side, none of the governors are acting hostile. They have all agreed to surrender and listen to the United States. Because the missile strike targets were only the Kingdom Palace and various military installations, the political structure of the Baim Kingdom is mostly intact. In order to take advantage of this, the United States decided to keep things as is. The governors will still be governors. They have been warned that their fate will be similar to the king if they step out of line. The only change would be that the United States government has replaced the king. That will only last until after the war with the Machians is finished. The best course of action afterward would be finding a suitable puppet. They needed someone who will listen to the United States and also be accepted by the BAME. This decision will come in the future. 0711 and 11th, 195 A. Primopolis, Septentrio Magus Imperium, Domum, Imperatoria, Continent. Emperor Arstant faced his group of advisors and Robert. I believe we should launch an invasion of the Machians to coincide with the Americans. We can regain the land we lost in the last war. The Fourth Mach Magus War which occurred 35 years ago started when the Machians launched an all-out surprise assault. The Machians were able to push through about 400 miles of land before being stopped. Then the Magusian counterattack was able to regain 200 miles. This led to the end of that war since both sides were exhausted from fighting for almost three years. Your Majesty, I highly oppose that decision. We are not ready to face the large Machian army. From our spies, I have heard that they are raising an even larger army. A few of the advisors seemingly nodded their heads in agreement with what Caius said. The Emperor was not happy. The Americans easily destroyed a third of the Mach Navy and defeated the BAME within a day. With their invasion coinciding with ours, we can easily take on the Mach. Why are you so opposed to this idea? Defeating the Mach Navy and the BAME means nothing. The BAME has greatly inferior technology and defeating a navy does not mean superiority on land. Emperor Arstant narrowed his eyes. If you do not want to use the military, I would like to borrow it for a time. Your Majesty, think wisely. You have to understand that I'm trying to prevent a disaster. If the Americans do win, we will never be able to regain our lost lands. Chaos Igenis sighed. Your Majesty, how about this? We could wait until the Americans strike before launching our invasion. If the American invasion starts successfully, then we can attack. If not, then I was right. 0430 November 11, 2019 CE. 0515, early hour, end 42nd, 195A. What was once a large open field 20 miles out of Agenport has now turned into a small airfield. The airstrip is long but the rest of the airbase is lacking. However, all necessities required for the Air Force to operate there is present. In the future, more facilities will be added but it currently has enough to support what the United States is going to need for Operation Diving Eagle. A Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt II is the first plane to land on the airstrip. With the help of aerial refueling from KC-135 Stratotankers, aircraft are able to make the trip from the United States to BAME. Of course, that means the planes could also directly fly to and bomb Mach without the need for a stop at BAME. However, rearmament would have been a major issue and it wasn't logistically sound. Chapter 16, Diving Eagle 0703, mid-hour, start 6th, 196 A. Furious listlessly looks up to the sky. To him, this is the Mach Magus front all over again. Although the Emperor said that an invasion was imminent, a season has already passed. The naval fortifications on all of the possible landing sites have mostly finished construction. 
Industro is and IIS are stationed next to the naval fortifications and behind the trenches. Artillery had been set up behind the front. The Navy patrolled the oceans and formations of Maximil fighters constantly flew overhead. All the men are ready for combat. The only thing missing was the enemy. Mercator, is there even an enemy? Maybe they got scared. Seems like they don't want to attack us on land. Well, at least this new trench does feel a bit better than the old one. Less filthy. A trench is still a trench. Now I'm thinking the recruits are lucky. They get a free vacation on the beach. Heard the beach isn't better. The recruits are getting bored there too. I wish I could just go home. I'm definitely going to miss my sister's wedding if this goes on. We still have about a year on the contract. My sister's wedding is probably going to be after a year. You get to go home to attend that then. No, there are rumors that until the situation is resolved, we are going to be staying here. Huh. It can't be longer than a year if the enemy never shows up. 1820 January 6, 2020 CE. 0110, new hour, start 7th, 196 AE. A hundred or so miles off of the Machian Imperium. Submarine Squadron 6, consisting of six Los Angeles class attack submarines and three Virginia class attack submarines is patrolling the oceans close to the Machian Imperium. Its purpose is to be an advance force and sink any Machian ships they find. Captain, the sonar detected a large group of Machian ships. Ten ships accompanied by one submarine. A Desmond-class battleship supported by destroyers, cruisers, and a submarine is patrolling the ocean. They have been relegated to this patrol role because of the heavy losses the Navy had sustained in combat with the United States and the fact that any ships that try to sail closer to the BAME continent get sunk. It was a massive embarrassment for the Navy to lose so many ships. However, they are still a force that could still be called number one when compared to the Magus. Currently, the threat of an American attack is too large for any Machian ship to travel further out. The Machian Navy also has understood that attacks by the Americans are unpredictable so lead ships of naval formations are now required to report their situation every hour. In addition to this, the Machian Navy decided to add submarines to their naval squadrons in an effort to understand what allows the Americans to sink their ships so fast. They hoped that the submarines would be undetected by the American Navy. A few minutes later. The nine attack submarines approached their target undetected and got within the firing range. Eleven targets sailing in a formation at a slow speed. Blissfully unaware of the silent submarines of death approaching them. Eleven MK-48 torpedoes launch from the tubes of the submarines and head straight at the Machian Naval Squadron. Swimming through the ocean at speeds of 63 miles per hour. The first torpedo hit the Machian submarine and detonate on the side of the sub. With a warhead of 650 pounds, the explosion rips the submarine in half and doom any possible crew that had survived the explosion. A pillar of water rises out of the water where the submarine was. The accompanying ships immediately try to establish contact with the submarine in order to figure out what that pillar of water was. It is too late. One by one. Torpedoes start hitting their marks. IS Trajinta Quinqua is the first surface ship to be hit by a torpedo. The explosion lifts the destroyer up as it breaks in half. Not even a second after the explosion, other ships start facing the same experience. Shouts of panic set in in the still unhit ships. They are facing an enemy that they can't even see. Americans? The Americans are attacking. Contact headquarters? We need reinforcements. It's too late. Abandon ship. Abandon ship. I don't want to die. Sailors are jumping overboard even if their ships aren't even hit yet. The officers of the ship try to futilely calm their men by shouting orders and words to lift their spirits. The last torpedo hits the IS Emilia, the Desmond-class battleship, and blows a hole in its starboard. Within seconds, Water is gushing in the ship and its start listing right. The nine submarines continued on. 200 miles from the Machian Imperium. Four carrier strike groups are waiting for the start of the air campaign. Four Nimitz-class aircraft carriers, 
20 Arleigh Burke class destroyers, 4 Ticonderoga cruisers, and 4 Los Angeles class attack submarines. American Airfield in BAME. The airfield has gotten quite large when compared to what it was a couple of months ago. Men run around in the airfield as ground crews prep the aircraft and airmen prepare for their missions. F 15ES of the 4th Fighter Wing are being loaded with missiles and bombs that will be used to take out a variety of military and political targets. F 16CS of the 20th Fighter Wing are being prepared as escorts. Barksdale Air Force Base, Louisiana. B 52HS of the 307th Bomb Wing are also being loaded up with missiles and bombs for strikes on high priority targets. They will make a round trip from their Air Force base to conduct the strike. 2000 January 6, 2020 CE. 0100, New Hour, Start 7, 196 AE. Fob outside of Agent Port, BAME. Nick looks at his watch as his crew gets into their tanks. The air campaign should be starting quite soon. Uma looks up from his position. So we are getting deployed after that. Seems like it, Connolly. Dillian laughs. We'll probably just be facing the bombed out remains. Nothing much for us to do. Just clean up. Brian counters. Not quite sure about that. Heard we will be facing about 1.5 million men. That big of an army should require weeks of bombing. The Air Force is probably just gonna soften them up for us. We will be doing some work. What if your intel is wrong? What did you say before? Murphy's Law. No. Murphy's Law is the idea that everything that could go wrong will go wrong. Not whatever you are saying. Pipe down you two. We have to get this tank ready. If we don't get there fast enough, the A2S from the Army will get there first. Connolly, we're going. 2010 January 6, 2020 CE, 0205, Rise Hour, Start 7, 196 A. Industropolis, Mach Imperium, Domum, Imperatoria, Continent. There is heavy pounding on the door to the bedroom of Emperor Industros. It jolts the Emperor and the Empress awake. Your Majesty. An urgent voice came from the closed door. The Emperor rubbed his face tiredly and got out of the bed. He proceeds to open the door. What is it? It's still the middle of the night. We have lost contact with one of our patrols. We did not receive their hourly report. This gets the Emperor's attention. Is it the Americans? Most likely Your Majesty. The Emperor looks back towards his wife. We are leaving Trebilia. Wake the children and get them ready. He then turns around to face the reporting servant. Have the luggage, coaches, and people prepared. Understood your majesty. The servant quickly headed towards the servant quarters. 2020 January 6, 2020 CE. 0110, new hour, start 7, 196 AE American Airfield at BAME. Fully loaded F-16CS and F-15ES start to take off from the airfield in procession. Multiple V formations are formed in the skies, all directly headed towards the Machian Imperium. 2045 January 6, 2020 CE. 0222, rise hour, start 7, 196 AE. 200 miles from the Machian Imperium. Tomahawk cruise missiles take to the skies from the Arleigh Burks and Ticonderogas in the four carrier strike groups. Industropolis, Mach Imperium, Domum, Imperatoria, Continent. It is the early morning and the city of Industropolis starts to awake. Cars and people start appearing on the streets. Life is normal even with another enemy country appearing. To them, it seems to be another front that won't change for decades. Just like the front with the Magasians. It even feels less of a threat since the enemy is separated by the ocean. A loud explosion rocks the bustling city as the palace and government buildings mysteriously explode. Stunned civilians looked towards the center of the city where the smoke rose. Major factories, coal-fired power plants, airfields, military installations, and oil refineries across the Mach Imperium are struck by tomahawks. These locations were marked out clearly as targets through earlier satellite observations. The beaches of the Machian Imperium facing the Eastern Sea, 
Atlantic Ocean, in a naval fortification that has a 145 mm gun, the crew manning it is lazing around. This is boring. I know, the posters promised us the adventure of war. It's been a season and I don't see no war. Kinda regret signing that contract. There's nothing to do at home but at least I can go anywhere I want back then. Hey, do you guys see that? See what? Look up at TH. Before he could finish, an explosion blows apart the fortification. Squadrons of F-15ES drop GBU-10 Paveway IIS on the line of naval fortifications. With a 2,000-pound warhead, they are specifically made for bunkers like these. The second line of defense. Ah. Mercator, what are those? Mercator squints his eyes toward the sky. Those are, planes. They aren't ours, are they? Unless we developed a new plane and there's an airfield in the ocean, then no. Their heads turn to follow the weird-looking planes as they fly overhead at incredible speeds. The artillery behind us. What are our anti-aircraft guns doing? I think they are too high, and too fast. Five miles behind the second line of defense. Hundreds of 84 mm artillery are set up in a neat line far behind the front. Artillerymen are elevating and lowering their artillery as practice. 77 mm anti-aircraft guns are placed around the artillery. With an ability to fire 13,000 feet into the sky, no known domesticated dragon or plane should be able to avoid it. Within seconds of being spotted by the Machians, F-15ES flew overhead. While the anti-aircraft guns are still being adjusted to aim at the F-15ES, the jets already flew far out of sight. Moments later, the line of artillery explodes in a massive fireball as secondary explosions occur because of the artillery ammunition lying around. AGM-65 Mavericks had been dropped from the planes onto them, 50 miles south of Industropolis. Venusia hit an airfield. Many camouflaged airfields are scattered across the Mach Imperium in order to avoid being scouted by Magasian Dragon forces. These airfields are hard to be seen by satellites. They have been painted the color of their surroundings and are somewhat covered by vegetation. Sir, we have received reports of an aerial attack on the new front near the town of Demail. Dispatch the fighters. About an hour later, Maximil fighters are overhead as they look down towards the now-destroyed artillery line. Although they got here as fast as possible, they couldn't find any enemy. All they could do at this point is to return home and give a report about what they saw. 0820 January 7, 2020 CE. 0810, mid-hour, start 7, 196 AE. A convoy of cars accompanied by military vehicles is making way down a forested road. In one of the cars, the Emperor and his family are unharmed and are on their way to a secret location where they will stay for the period until the war ends. Chapter 17, Death from Above 0238 January 9, 2020 CE 0518, Early Hour, Start 9, 196 AE In the air over the Machian Imperium Fox 3, Fox 3, Fox 3 Three AM-120 Amram detach from each of the wings of the 2F-A18E-F Super Hornet. In a combat air patrol over a town near the beaches of the Mach Imperium, the two Super Hornets had detected six aircraft about 90 miles away. 90 miles away. A squadron of Maximil fighters is on its way to patrol the airspace over the beaches. Constant reports of enemy aircraft have forced the Machian Air Corps to resort to the idea of consistent air patrols. Before, whenever there are reports of enemy aircraft, airplanes would be detached to scour the area to find them. However, every single time the enemy aircraft can get away and leave a wake of destruction behind. A few minutes later, six missiles streaked through the skies at Mach 4, 3,045 miles per hour towards its targets. Flying at 110 miles per hour, one of the six Maximil pilots noticed two small dots in front of them. It didn't seem like enemy aircraft because of its small size and how it didn't match the description of what had been witnessed. The two small dots soon turned into six. By then all of the pilots had noticed them. Whatever it was, 
it seems to be coming closer every second and is heading directly towards them. The six fighters break formation to not collide with whatever is flying towards them. To their surprise and horror, the six dots all adjusted course. One following each fighter, they desperately try to shake the dots. They apply what they had learned in training on how to dodge wyverns and other planes. One of the pilots starts an upward climb hoping that whatever is following him can't change altitude. This upward climb slows the fighter down. The pursuing object also starts an upward climb seemingly without slowing down. In seconds, the dot has struck the fighter. In a fiery ball, the Maximil fighter explodes in the air and the pilot dies. The five other fighters turn around in hopes that they could outrun the objects. It is a futile attempt as in mere seconds, all five are destroyed. 0440 January 9, 2020 CE. 0620, mid-hour, start 9, 196 AE. Venusia hit an airfield. On the grasses near the airfield, a man with a clipboard runs up to a uniformed person who is watching the planes take off and land. Sir, Squadron 22 is late by an hour. We have no reports of them coming back. Which area have we sent them to? I believe the sector above the town of Ostia. Squadron 33 should be patrolling that area now. Let's see if they find them. On the Nimitz-class aircraft carrier USS George Washington. Captain, we are detecting increased enemy air activity. We just had two Super Hornets shoot down six possible Mackian warplanes. Clear the skies. Understood. 0740 January 9, 2020 CE. 0750, mid-hour, start 9, 196 AE. Venusia hit an airfield. Squadron 33, Squadron 346, Squadron 264. Squadron 566, Squadron 578, Squadron 351, Squadron 510, and Squadron 270 are late by an hour. We are deeming them as lost. We are receiving reports of people witnessing our planes being shot down with no visible enemy in sight. The planes will seem fine and then in mere seconds, they will start performing evasive maneuvers before turning into a giant fireball. There are also reports of things like small metal arrows flying towards the plane but that isn't confirmed yet. How is the other airfield charged with patrol doing? They have lost nine squadrons. We can't keep this up, stop all patrols. But sir, we will leave the entire country vulnerable to air attack. These patrols aren't working. If we continue at this rate, we won't have enough fighters to protect our bombers. What do we even need the bombers for? The Emperor has given orders that once the Americans land, we will bomb them to oblivion with our bombers. Sir, the bombers are useless in this situation if they can shoot down anything we put in the sky, the enemy will be flying anywhere they want with no opposition if we stop the patrols. The patrols have done nothing but lose planes and pilots? As you said they can shoot down anything, why waste the fighters when we can do an all-out surprise attack and obliterate their landing force? We need bombers escorted by fighters for that. If we have enough fighters acting as cover for whatever they are shooting down our planes with, then the bombers can get to our enemy. We need to at least find a way to shoot the enemy down? Is this what the Machian Air Corps is? Are we too cowardly to defend our country's skies? Anger flamed in the airfield commander's eyes. That's enough? I'm not wasting any more pilots on useless patrols. Get back to your station. 0740 January 10th, 2020 CE. 0750, mid-hour, start 10th, 196 AE. Near the town of Ixxa, in between the beach and Industropolis. Pomponia is strolling down the quiet road with groceries in hand. All around her are the beautiful flat plains and the clear blue skies. Her house is about a couple of miles away from the nearby town of Ixxa. She moved there because she liked to live in solitude and enjoyed the beautiful scenery. A slow roar came overhead and Pomponia looks up. It is a scene that she has seen many times recently. On the first few occasions, she went off the road to avoid being spotted. After a while, 
It seemed like those planes didn't care about her so she resumed walking as she always does. She hopes that her peace won't be broken by this war but knows that war is coming to her. The constant roars she hears throughout the day shows that the Machian Air Corps doesn't stand a chance and that the enemy would be upon them soon. So far, she has not seen any Machian airplanes for the entire day. She has also heard that most cities have lost their electricity because of the bombings. 0830 January 10, 2020 CE 0815, mid-hour, start 10, 196 AE Port Bannock Many warships that aren't out on patrol or aren't on the other side of the Imperium can be seen at this port docked. Losses have been mounting for the Great Eastern Fleet because of past battles with the Americans and the patrols being attacked by them. With the Machian fleet losing more than half of its ships, the admirals have decided that they can no longer help. They have decided to dissolve the Great Eastern Fleet and integrate them with the Great Western Fleet. Sending all the ships on to the other side of the Imperium and leaving this side with no navy for defense. It was obvious to all that continuing naval operations on this side of the Imperium would be futile. They needed to make sure that they still had a good enough navy to keep the Magasians at bay. What remains of the Great Eastern Fleet is preparing to leave the port. All of a sudden, explosions occur on many of the docked ships. About 20 minutes earlier, less than 170 miles away, Squadrons of F-15ES unleash a horde of Harpoon missiles and turn back. Satellite observations had shown a gathering of Machian warships at the port that they are currently targeting. To ensure that the seas are clear for the amphibious assault, it was decided to destroy all Machian warships. This gathering was the perfect chance for that. The submarines have shown the Machian Navy death from below, now it was time to show them death from above. 0230 January 11, 2020 CE 0515, early hour, start 11, 196 AE Airspace right outside of the Mach Imperium 10B52 HS loaded up each with 70,000 pounds of munitions approach the Machian Imperium With most of the airfields, factories, power plants, military installations, oil refineries, and important government buildings bumped to oblivion, it has a special target. A target perfectly suited for a bomber. Carrying CBU-87S, cluster bombs, it headed towards the Machian trench line. A static defense with anti-air emplacements so obsolete that it has no hope of reaching the altitude of a B-52. The trenches. Ah. Mercator. What is it furious? Run. 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 Furious scrambles over the trench and starts sprinting. Around Mercator, soldiers look up and point towards the massive plane that is flying directly towards them. What is his majesty's name is that? Hey Furious? Furious, wait up. Some soldiers do the same and start running out of the trench. Most just stare at the black dragon-like plane as it comes closer. Some that try to run is ordered back to the trenches by an officer. As the ones who remain watches, they notice objects falling out of the bottom of the gigantic planes. Towards where the plane dropped the objects, the ground there starts to explode. Officers shout to their soldiers to get down. Soldiers dive to the ground. Twenty minutes later, three miles out of the trenches, out of breath, Mercator huffed his words to Furious who was next to him seemingly dying from the running. Furious, what was that, about? I, felt, death. I just, I just felt that I needed to run. To get far away. We are going to get punished for this. It looked like one of those legendary dragons from the stories. Anybody would be scared of that. They turned around. They had run a couple of miles from the trench. Just then, a massive explosion along the trench occurred. They had to shield their eyes because of the fiery blast. It got bombed. I hope everyone's fine. I think I saw some others run with me when I ran out. I think the trench is deep enough to protect everyone. The tanks are probably gone though. An hour later. Back at the trench. See, I saved our asses. The trench is gone. What replaced it is a massive crater forming a line where the trench was. Not even bodies seem to have remained. 
Mercator tried to look down the trench line to see if anything remained. How long does this go on? They couldn't have bummed the entire trench system on this front. Mercator, I think we should retreat. There's no reason for staying here. Anybody who didn't run is dead. Where do we go? How about the closest town? That should be Andrea. In the throne room of the Emperor of Magus Imperium. Can't we begin the attack? Your Majesty, I still highly oppose that decision. You said that if the American invasion is successful that we can attack. Of course, we can attack if the invasion is successful. Well the invasion is successful, what are you opposing? I don't see any invasion. What? No invasion? Didn't you hear that the Americans have nearly disabled the entire Mach Air Corps and destroyed a large part of the Machian fleet in the eastern seas? The Machians are literally on their last legs. But the Machians still have more than a million of men on our side of the front. Their western fleet is also completely intact and dangerous. Chaos, just because your grandfather was the one who stopped the Machian advance doesn't mean you get to impose your will onto my military. Your Majesty, I will let you know that I have many generals that are more loyal to me than to you. Chaos Igenus, are you speaking of treason? Emperor Arstand spat those words out like poison. He understood that Chaos had many generals who supported him but did not like it when Chaos used that card to give himself power. Your Majesty, all I want is to protect and defend our nation. Nothing else. Now is not the right time. If all you are going to talk about is invading the Machians, I will excuse myself. Chaos walked out of the throne room without looking back. Chapter 18, The Eagle Has Landed 0515 January 11, 2020 CE 0637, Mid-Hour, Start 11, 196 AE Midway to Andrea Mercator, Furious, and 30 other soldiers continue along a road that leads to Andrea. Mercator and Furious had met the other 30 soldiers along the way. These soldiers had also run like them when they had seen the giant bombers. Not far down the road, they see a soldier poking his head out of the forest that was adjacent to the road. The soldier shouts to them. Hey, Mercator, who is at the front of the group, replies. Hi, there. Are you soldiers from the front? Yes. I'm Sergeant Mercator Cordus of the 106th Infantry Regiment. Where are you from? I'm Private Kaiso Protus, with the 10th Tank Battalion. Kaiso looks up towards the sky before continuing to speak again. Quickly get off the road. They get off the road and continue into the forest. 10th Tank Battalion. We were supposed to arrive at the front yesterday but we got bombed. We had to divert into the forest to continue. Tanks aren't good in forests but it was still manageable since the trees weren't dense. What are you guys doing here from the front? The front's gone. The naval fortifications, trench, and artillery have been bumped to oblivion. We're retreating to Andrea to try to establish communications with the headquarters. A look of surprise is seen on Kaiso's face. Is this all the survivors from your sector? I only see about a platoon. Mercator shrugs as they come up to the tanks. There should be some more. I don't expect much. Most didn't get out in time. Kaseo sighs. Then there's no more reason to continue towards the front anymore. Yeah. By the way, I thought you said this was the 10th tank battalion. If I remember correctly, a tank battalion should consist of about 36 tanks. Kaso smiles bitterly. Quite knowledgeable of you. We originally had three companies of tanks. We are the only ones left. 36 tanks turned into 12 in mere minutes. We heard a roar and saw the enemy planes fly overhead. Before we knew it, the two companies of our battalion in front of us exploded. Are you still going to continue towards the front? I have to report what you just told me to the commander. I will go find him now. Kaiso quickly runs off and leaves them to follow the Industro IIS. A few minutes later, the tanks stop. Kaiso comes back with a man in an officer uniform. Which one of you is the leader of this platoon? Mercator salutes. I'm just a sergeant, sir. We are just disorganized retreaters. Just trying to establish contact with a superior officer. Since you are an officer, 
We will follow you. The officer looked at the retreaters before sighing and turning towards Mercator. I want you to lead them. We're turning back to Andrea. Kaiso, continue looking for anyone on the main road and don't forget to follow the tank noises. Yes, sir. 0620 January 11, 2020 CE. 0710, mid-hour, start 11, 196 A. Fob Dagger, near Agentport. In the command center, there are computers everywhere as men work round the clock. Sir, we have located the source of the enemy biplanes. They seem to be taking off from these two airfields. In his hands is a folder containing a satellite map with red circles drawn on where he is pointing. Hmm. They are very well camouflaged. That looks very like a part of a forest. We will need to strike those. Keep an eye out for more. A few minutes later. A hundred or so miles off the mock Imperium. 30 Tomahawk cruise missiles launch from Arleigh Burke destroyers and Ticonderoga cruisers. 15 heading in one direction and the other 15 in a different direction. Less than an hour later, airmen have gathered around in a massive building to listen to their base commander speak. Listen up men. These are trying times for our great Imperium. Our pathetic navy has failed us and the Imperium. It's time for the Air Corps to rise. We will not be an embarrassment like the Navy. The Emperor has ordered all of you to be the saviors of our nation. Do not disappoint him. Once we receive reports that the enemy has landed, all air units on this base will swarm the enemy. All other airfields will do the same. The fighters must protect the bombers at all costs. The success of this mission depends on the bombers. Those who fall will be remembered as heroes. Do not fear death. Understood. Yes, sir. Suddenly, the building shook violently. The sound of explosions resonates throughout the base. A person runs into the building. Enemy attack? Get to the planes. Airmen run out of the building in a disorganized hurry. Seconds later, more explosions resonate through the air. Then a shout of panic arose. The runway has been destroyed. We can't take off. Find cover? Find cover. A massive explosion sends shockwaves across the airfield. Something had hit the building where bombs had been stored. Man the AA guns? Find enemy planes. Thirty minutes later, the base is burning brightly as fires rage. Black smoke billows to the sky. Sporadic explosions occur wherever the fires touch ammunition. 1202 January 11, 2020 CE. 1001, down hour. Start 11th, 196 A. Anasium Castle. A person in military uniform knocks on the door. A haggard voice replies. Come in. What's the report? The voice came from a man who is looking at a map placed on a big table. Around the table, there are other men in uniform. The entering person saluted. Your Majesty, we are suffering massive losses in our infrastructure and military installations. We have just lost two of our hidden air bases. They were the ones operating the patrols. How is the front? We lost communications with it. The last news we know is that the trench is fine but the artillery and naval fortifications are gone. Send more tanks and artillery. Get them from the reserves. Anywhere that's not vital on the Magus front. Understood. After the person exits, a heavy silence set in. 1932 January 11, 2020 CE. 0146, new hour, start 12th, 196 A. A hundred miles off of the mock Imperium, Nick and his tank crew board their Abrams. Around them, crews of other tanks are standing around. The tanks are on an LCAC in the belly of the USS Kearsarge, a WASP class amphibious assault ship. Around the Kearsarge, Multiple other amphibious assault ships accompanied it. The seas had been completely cleared from the combined efforts of submarines and strike fighters. We will just be securing the landing area and nearby towns. The three corps of the army will do the actual push to the enemy capital. Brian looks curiously at Nick. Won't there be any heavy resistance? Like the beach landings of World War II. The Air Force has been bombing them for six straight days. If they did their job right, don't expect much. 
If they didn't then we are in for a ride. 2000 January 11, 2020 CE, 0200, rise hour, start 12, 196 AE. Nick and his crew felt their tank wobble as waves hit the LCAC. Seems like the Air Force did their job. Brian looked at Uma questionably. Hmm? What do you mean Connolly? No bombardments. I heard this country had World War I technology. They should have set up artillery or something to try to stop our landing. A few minutes later, after the LCAC deflated and opened, their Abrams touched the sand of the Mackian beach. Nick looks out of his tank. Wowie boys, the Air Force really did their job. A few miles in front of them, there are rubbles of what could be barely recognized as fortifications. Other tanks start forming up on the beach as more and more LCACs land. AAV-7S come up from the sea and start disgorging marines. Andrea. Mercator, when do you think they will finally come? I don't know. Haven't you asked that question multiple times already? Well, we're stuck in another trench now. At least it's in a town. Yeah, with no people around. With the arrival of what remained of the 10th Tank Battalion and survivors of the trench, the Mackian forces that are in town are 12 tanks and around 100 infantry. Using the telegram, they have been able to establish contact with headquarters and learn that more reinforcements are coming. Of course, the reinforcements were ordered to go to the trenches but that idea was scrapped when the survivors reported the destruction of the trench line. Headquarters then ordered them to evacuate all civilians inside the town. Most civilians had complained but they had no actual ability to oppose it. Fifteen minutes later. Road to Andrea. Why are we advancing so slowly? Can't the lead tank pick this pace up? Connolly, this is a forested place. We have to be careful. Uma Connolly grumbles to that reply. Their platoon of 4 M1A1 Abrams had been tasked with securing a town close to the beaches. Four other platoons have been ordered to do the same for four other towns. These are all the towns within 15 miles of the beach. 2044 January 11, 2020 CE. 0222, mid-hour, start 12, 196 AE. Andrea. A soldier bursts out of the nearby forest shouting and running towards the officer. Captain? Captain? Enemies? Enemies? They are moving slowly down the road? They will be here in minutes. Numbers. I could count many tanks about the size of our Industro 1S. Get to your positions men. We will hold out until our reinforcements arrive. Less than three miles away from Andrea. The forested road is quite peaceful. Nothing had disturbed them or tried to stop them. Then the platoon leader came over the headset. I have a visual of the town. Multiple hostels. Engaging. The lead tank lurched back a bit after it sent a round flying towards the enemy trench. We are moving forward. Andrea. Mercator is peeking out of the window of the house. We are so lucky to be repositioned here. Furious is crouched underneath the window. Mercator. What's the situation outside there? The enemy tanks just blew up the trench at the entrance with a single shot. A few minutes later, multiple rounds ping off the sides of the four Abrams. Holy cow! Brian shouts in surprise as a couple of shots ping off their tank. Alpha 3, Alpha 4, deal with the left. Alpha 2, with me. The lead tank and Nick's tank swing their turrets right to aim at the enemy tanks. Using their thermals, they can see the enemy heat signatures in the forest. I have sights on one. Loaded. Sending. The small enemy light tank explodes in a fiery ball as the M830A1 heat, high explosive anti-tank, hits it. Back up, back up. Within mere seconds of the start of the tank battle, a third of their forces are already gone. The enemy has seemingly suffered no casualties. Their captain had come up with an ingenious plan to catch the enemy off guard. Instead of putting the tanks in the town to guard it, they can station the tanks inside the forest. This will allow them to launch a surprise ambush while the enemy comes up the road towards the town. Of course, this didn't account for the enemy being invulnerable to their guns. The tank crews in the surviving tanks start to panic. What kind of tank can ricochet multiple shots to its side? 
It is as if they were trying to shoot through a hundred millimeters of solid steel. To them this is ridiculous. Equipped with its classified Cobham armor, the armor all around the Abrams can be comparable to several hundred millimeters of steel. Chapter 19, The Army Goes Rolling Along, 2050 January 11, 2020 CE, 0225, mid-hour, start 12th, 196 A, a few miles out from Andrea, while the Industro IIS try to retreat into the town. The Abrams quickly and efficiently destroy each one of them with 100% accuracy. The Industro IIS tried to return fire but their 40 mm can barely do anything. A few minutes later, the charred remains of the 12 tanks sit in the forest as the four barely scratched Abrams make their way towards the town. Andrea. Mercator looks through the window as the sand-colored enemy tanks continue towards him. Furious, we are getting out of here. Our tanks are gone. Why are we abandoning our position? We don't have anything to go up against armor. They only had four tanks and they wiped our twelve out in mere minutes. Us infantry can't do anything against that. Come on now, Furious. I thought you liked running. 2054 January 11, 2020 CE. 0227, mid-hour, start 12th, 196 AE. Andrea. The platoon of Abrams stop in the town. Mackian's soldiers are seen further down the street hurrying out of the town. It seems like they are making a run for it. Don't shoot. Come on Nick, they are enemies. Dillian, no. Our job is just to make sure that no enemy soldiers approach. They can run away if they want. 2116 January 11, 2020 CE. 0238, mid-hour. Start 12th, 196 A. A couple of miles from Andrea. After getting a good distance away from Andrea, the surviving Mackian soldiers stop to rest. Furious sighs and looks toward Mercator. Where are we even running to this time? We can't keep this going. Every time the enemy does something, the only thing we do is run. Our infantry regiment doesn't even exist anymore. We will link up with the reinforcements. We still have a company of infantry with us. They aren't even part of ours. Can't we just go home? We have done our duty at the front and done it again in the town. All I want is to be home with my family and be there for my sister's wedding. The other men in their group, all ranked at or lower than corporal, start grumbling in agreement too. They all look towards Mercator, who is the highest ranked out of them. Mercator sighs a bit. Listen. Desertion is punishable by execution. If they catch, Mercator is cut off by Furious. But we don't even have any assigned unit. They are all gone. Don't you see? This doesn't even count as desertion. It does, we are still soldiers. If they find us deserting, we will be executed. But have you seen what happened? Have you seen? Furious points towards Andrea. The enemy is impossible to beat. If we continue like this we are going to die, that isn't certain. But what I do know is that if we desert, we will be executed. That's guaranteed death? Furious, we are fighting this war to protect our families. The enemies are on our land. If we let them through, we will lose everything we hold dear. Our families, our country, even our lives. This war was started by the Emperor? It doesn't concern us commoners. It does? The enemy doesn't care who is who, as long as we are Machian, they will kill us. Furious and Mercator looked at each other tensely. A moment passed before Mercator sighed and turned towards everyone. Listen, everyone, I have no power to actually make you all stay. You can leave if you want. But hear this, the moment you leave is the moment that you are not my responsibility. If you are getting executed for desertion, it does not concern me. Those who want to stay, we will regroup with the reinforcements. A few men start to go their own ways. Most decide to stay. Furious, you going. Are you sure you don't want to come with me? That is desertion. I actually want to live. Mercator, for almost all my time in the military I have been with you. You are my best friend. I don't think we can live any longer if we continue like this. I really wish you reconsider. Furious stood there looking at Mercator's determined eyes. 
A minute passes while both continue to stare at each other. Furious sighs. Ugh, fine, I will stay with you. I just can't abandon you. Come on, let's go. Mercator turns towards the others who haven't left. Everyone else staying with us. One of the men shouts. Yeah, we really can't go anywhere. Our homes are days away. 0300 January 12th, 2020 CE. 0530, mid-hour, start 12th, 196 AE. Andrea. The army is taking their damn sweet time getting here. We will be at the enemy capital by now if we didn't have to wait. Nick looks down from his open commander hatch at Uma. Be patient, we don't have enough units to actually push deeper. The engineers are also setting up a fob near the beaches so that's going to take time too. 0524 January 12th, 2020 CE. 0642, mid-hour, start 12th. 196 AE. In a village, Mercator, Furious, and the remaining soldiers rest. Can't we just commandeer their vehicles? For the hundreds time, no. Furious, we can't just steal their vehicles. It's not stealing, we are just borrowing them in the name of the Imperium. We will try to return them afterward. A no is a no. Oh come on. We have been walking for many hours already. Even more people have deserted. We still have a company of men. They haven't all deserted. We are bound to run into the reinforcements soon. As of now, rest up, we will be walking again soon. 0612 January 12, 2020 CE. 0706, mid-hour, start 12, 196 AE. Andrea. Finally, the army is here. With the infantry taking up positions around the town. The crews can relax out of their tanks. Brian looked at the large amounts of units curiously. Wow, that's a lot of M1A2S. How did they even get here? I thought only the Marines had amphibious assault capabilities. Dillian, being the know-all of the Iraq War, explains. Usually it requires the government hiring privately owned cargo ships. I'm pretty sure we have enough extra cargo ships to transport the entire army here. Most American cargo ships became useless after being transported to this world. The only thing they can be used for now is transporting heavy stuff around the United States. Brian looks towards Nick after nodding. Sergeant, what are we going to be doing now? We will be following them. It's a non-stop road trip to the enemy capital boys. 0716 January 12, 2020 CE. 0738, mid-hour. Start 12th, 196 A. Mercator, Furious, and the company of soldiers approach the next town. They notice tanks and infantry streaming out of the town. Finally, reinforcements. Having walked nearly 20 miles, they could only stagger towards their destination. The convoy stopped in front of them. Towards the back, an officer steps out of his vehicle and approaches them. Halt. Identify yourselves. Mercator breathes out his reply, Sergeant Mercator Cordus of the 106th Infantry Regiment. We came from Andrea. Captain Bruce Sura. Were you the ones who reported the situation at the front? Yes. I thought you guys were instructed to stay put. The soldier looked towards Mercator and his group. Where's the 10th Tank Battalion? We got attacked. The 10th Tank Battalion got destroyed at Andrea. Air attack. No. The enemy has landed. Is this all the survivors? Yes. Can we have a rest, sir? We have been walking for many hours and we are tired. Sure. I will have to inform the Major General. A few minutes later, the captain followed by what seemed to be the Major General headed towards Mercator. Mercator stood and saluted at them. At ease. Sergeant, what were the enemy numbers? I saw four tanks. Four tanks? I thought the 10th Tank Battalion still had 12. How did 12 lose to 4? The enemy tanks are much better than ours. When the 10th Tank Battalion tried to engage the enemy's 4 tanks, the 10th Tank Battalion was destroyed in a matter of minutes. It didn't even seem like our tanks did any damage. We had to retreat after the enemy started focusing fire on us. Did the enemies not give chase? No, they stayed put in Andrea. 
The Major General nodded. Are your men still able to fight? These aren't my men seeing that we are just scattered survivors from the various infantry regiments from the front. But can they continue to fight? At our current condition, we can't walk anymore. Some of us don't even have our guns. We will give you some of the extra weapons and you can ride on the industro is. Understood, sir? Thank you, sir. The Mackian 6th Army Division consisting of infantry, industro is, industro IIS, and horse-drawn artillery continues down the road. 0808 January 12, 2020 CE. 0804, mid-hour, start 12, 196 AE. Malika hit an airfield. We got orders. The bombers need to be dispatched to Andrea and the beach near it. The enemies finally landed. Yap. The base comes alive as ground crews start loading the bombers. Less than 30 minutes later. V formation of bombers and their fighter escorts take to the sky. In another base, the same thing happens. In the skies above the landing area. In an E-2 Hawkeye. Launched from the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower, a radar operator is staring at a radar screen. Holy cow is his response when hundreds of dots start lighting up on the screen. USS George Washington. The radar on the Hawkeye is data linked to the ships in the carrier strike groups. Ah, uh, Admiral, you have to see this. The Vice Admiral looks at the screen of the radar operator on the ship. Get the Super Hornets in the air. Fifteen minutes later. Four squadrons of Super Hornets, 44 in total, cruise through the skies towards the horde of enemy aircraft. The Super Hornets burst out of the clouds and into the view of a hundred biplane fighters and bombers. Fox 2, Fox 2, AIM-9X sidewinders launch from the wings of the F-A-18S towards the cloud of enemies. The Maxi Mills biplane fighters speed up in front of the bombers. For the Imperium. Moments later. Explosions occur as the missiles hit the wall of Maxi Mills. Bits of wood, cloth, and metal drop out of the sky as the Maxi Mills formations are decimated. As the Super Hornets get closer, a hail of bullets is unleashed from each of their 20mm M61A2 Vulcan, a Gatling style rotary cannon. The hail of bullets cut down any of the biplanes in its way like a knife slicing through butter. The biplane fighters try to return fire by firing their twin-mounted AG-2 machine guns but they couldn't aim fast enough as the enemy planes fly past them at speeds of up to 777 miles per hour. One of the Super Hornet's wings accidentally hits the wing of a Maxi Mills. The biplane's wing, made out of cloth and wood, is instantly ripped and the biplane is sent spiraling into the ground. The Super Hornet's wing, on the other hand, is completely fine. The remaining Maxi Mills try to turn around in order to continue engaging the Super Hornets and protect their bombers but the Super Hornets are already coming around to engage them again. The biplanes are cut apart as the Super Hornets wreak havoc everywhere in the Mackian formations. The biplane bombers try to break off in order to escape but are shot down as the Super Hornets zoom past them. A few minutes later. Inside one of the Super Hornets. All hostels are down. We are returning to home plate. Chapter 20, Battle of the Eastern Plains. 0740 January 12, 2020 CE. 0750, mid-hour, start 12, 196 AE. Near the town of Ixxa. Pomponia looks out of her house's window as sand-colored tanks rumbled across. The first wave is the big tanks and then came the smaller ones. They have no semblance to the Mackian tanks she had seen in the newspapers. It was clear whose tank those belonged to. Albeit a bit worried, she is glad that they seem to have ignored her lone house in the plains. About an hour earlier, she was in the town of Ixxa when soldiers who were retreating from the trenches came. They had said that all the Mackian units on the front have been destroyed and warned the townsfolk of the possibility of the enemies coming through. It was just yesterday that some people from Andrea came to find their relatives or pass through. They had said that the soldiers claimed that the frontline defenses were destroyed and that the soldiers had to use the town as a last line of defense. Pomponia returns to drinking her tea after watching the scene for a bit. 
She wasn't that concerned about what happened to the mock Imperium. As long as she can continue to live her secluded lifestyle, she will be content. 0820 January 12, 2020 CE 0810, mid-hour, start 12, 196 AE The Eastern Plains of the Mock Imperium The 1st Armored Brigade Combat Team, part of the 1st Armored Division of the 3 Corps of the U.S. Army, is the spearhead leading the charge for the 3 Corps and the 2nd Marine Division. The 1st ABCT consisted of their headquarters and headquarter company, the 6th Squadron, 1st Cavalry Regiment, the 2nd Battalion, 27th Armor Regiment, the 4th Battalion, 70th Armor Regiment, the 1st Battalion, 36th Infantry Regiment, the 2nd Battalion, 3rd Field Artillery Regiment, the 16th Brigade Engineer Battalion, and the 501st Brigade Support Battalion. This consisted of M1A2 Abrams, M2 Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicles, M3 Bradley Cavalry Fighting Vehicles, M109A6 Paladin 155mm Howitzers, Humvees, M113 Derived Support Vehicles, and various types of trucks. Attached to them is the 2 Marine Expeditionary Force is a platoon from the 2nd Tank Battalion. After driving out of Andrea, they have quickly exited the forested area and into a wide open plain. They have passed many towns but they were void of enemies. Only civilians were there. The platoon from the 2nd Tank Battalion of the Marines followed a tank company from the 2nd Battalion, 27th Armor Regiment as a forward element for the 1st ABCT. The tank company with its attached Marines tank platoon, which will total 18 tanks, is many miles ahead of the 1st ABCT. Aura. Uma is having the time of his life driving at full speed down the plains. The Abrams isn't exactly fast with only a maximum off-road speed of 30 miles per hour but it still is a nice experience. 5 miles away, sitting on top of the Industro 1 as it thunders forward on the plains, furious groans and looks toward the sky. This is much better. I'm never walking for that long ever again. Say, Mercator, when do you think we will ever get home? Heard the railroads are all gone because of the enemy bombings. Where did you live again? My town is quite close to the center of the Imperium. The nearest city is probably Bertie. You will probably miss your sister's wedding now. Nothing I can do at this point. Would have loved to be there. Well, they might postpone it because of the war. Anyways, do you think we will win this war? I'm not sure, the enemy bombings have been slacking off but their ground units are here. If we can push them back to the sea, we will win. We will probably encounter them along the way to Andrea and then hopefully push them back. A few minutes later, a soldier on a horse is quickly riding through the plains. He approaches the formations of men and tanks marching towards him and rides to an officer. Sir, I'm with the recon group. There's an enemy formation approaching us. Numbers and composition. I could see more than 10 tanks, sir. They are about the size of our industro is but have the speed comparable to that of a horse. An officer shouts orders as men run around with shovels. Quickly, get the tanks up to the front. A small enemy contingent will be here soon. Mercator, Furious, and a lot of other soldiers are digging a small mound to act as cover. The flat plains are not good terrain when you don't want to be out in the open. How did they get here so quickly? Don't worry. Just keep digging, furious. It's a small number of tanks compared with the hundreds that we have, there's no way we will lose. 0828 January 12, 2020 CE. 0814, mid-hour, start 12, 196 AE. What seemed to be a long small mound in the middle of the plains appears in their view. Of course. This won't concern anyone in the tank company and the attached marine tank platoon if not for the fact that there are multiple enemy tanks scattered behind it. The captain of the company comes through on the radio. Fire at will. Continue moving forward. The twin 57mm of the Industro is open fire as the battalion of Abrams charge headfirst towards them. Connolly shouts out while looking through his driver port. What the heck? Do their guns outrange ours? 
Sure they might have more range but their accuracy is complete shit replies Dillian as explosions occur around them also, I don't think they can even pen the armor on our tank. Just as he says it, some lucky shots explode on the nearby Abrams but do no damage. Rumbling across the plains, the Abrams gets the enemy tanks within the range of the Abrams 120mm. I got my sights on one in range, do I fire? For God's sakes, Dillian, fire. Whilst charging straight at the Mackian lines, the group of Abrams focus their fire on the Mackian tanks. Heat rounds create fiery explosions upon impact with the Mackian tanks. The Industro IIS with their 40mm gun are sitting ducks and can't return fire because of the shorter range of their guns as compared to the older Industro eyes. Their maximum of 22mm of armor, although better than the Industro 1S maximum of 16mm, also doesn't help. The M830A1 heat round of the Abrams can penetrate up to 420mm of steel. Shells from the 57mm of the Industro IIS fly towards the Abrams but their inaccuracy and inability to go through the Abrams armor make the effort futile. Less than 10 minutes later, still having no Abrams destroyed or even disabled, they continue getting closer while firing upon the enemy. Even after getting hit multiple times, the Abrams tanks just shrug everything off. On the other hand, the Machians are losing one tank for every second that goes by. The 200 Industro is and IIS have been whittled down to half their numbers. As the Abrams get closer to the mound, the front Abrams notices movement and heat signatures behind the mounds. A few more minutes later, with his head nearly kissing the ground, Furious looks to his left as bullets whiz past above him. To the left of him is the captain they had talked to when they had encountered the reinforcements. Captain, what do we do? Our tanks are useless and we are pinned. The captain lifts his head to answer Furious. We will have to you. The captain couldn't finish the sentence as a 7.62mm bullet enters his head and comes out the other side. The captain's head falls lifelessly onto the ground. Blood splatters across Furious's face. Ah! Furious turns toward Mercator and Mercator notices the shock in Furious's eyes. Furious? Calm down? Keep your head low. An enemy tank crests the mound and comes down crushing those who were below it. I want to live. I want to live. I want to live. Furious is shaking uncontrollably in fear. Mercator has his face hugging the ground. Just keep calm. Keep your head down. 0850 January 12th, 2020 CE. 0825, mid-hour, start 12th, 196 AE. At this point, the morale of the Mackian 6th Army Division broke. Retreat. Get out of here. Those shouts can be heard from those that took up positions behind them. Mackian soldiers stood up and broke into a run. Machine gun fire is all around them. The few remaining Mackian tanks also start backing up. They were also subjected to heavy fire. Still lying on the ground, Furious panics. Mercator, what do we do? Their fire doesn't seem to be focusing on us. Mercator raises his head a little. We should run. Mercator and Furious quickly get off the ground and start sprinting. Some bullets still whiz past them. An Industro 2 explodes a few hundred feet behind them. Ack. Furious looks behind him to see that Mercator has fallen onto the ground. Mercator. Furious runs back to Mercator and extends a hand to help. I got you. Come on get up. I can't. Something hit my leg. Just, just go. Wait, what are you doing? Furious grabs Mercator. I won't leave you behind. Didn't I say I couldn't abandon you? With Mercator on his back, Furious starts sprinting out of the kill zone. More than 10 minutes later. Cease fire. They are out of range. We have some infantry surrendering. The battlefield became quiet as the machine gun and tank fire from the Abrams stops. Across the plains, Mackian soldiers stand up with their hands in the air. Brian looks out of the tank hatch and whistles. Wow, this is a lot of prisoners. What are we going to do with them? We still have to get to the capital but we can't leave them behind. Nick watches as the Mackian soldiers throw down their rifles. 
We are going to link up with the rest of the first ABCT. They have space for prisoners. A few minutes later, Mercator, are you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Furious had sprinted quite far from the battle. He feels something trickling down the back of his pants. I'm going to need to set you down and check on that wound. Further down, Furious sees a group of Machian soldiers lying on the ground near some sparse trees. There seem to be people tending to the wounded. Furious runs to them and sets Mercator down near one of the trees. There is a massive gash on the back of Mercator's left leg. Something like shrapnel had ripped his legs. An expanding blood pool starts to form on the ground from that wound. Medic? Medic? Is there a medic here? A soldier comes running to them. I'm a medic. What's the problem? My friend, he's been hit with something on the back of his leg and, and he's losing a lot of blood. Rip a piece of cloth and put it on the wound. Apply pressure to it. I still have to tend to some of the more heavily wounded. The medic then went off. In the first major land battle between the Mach Imperium and the United States of America, the Mackian 6th Army Division was nearly wiped out by the 2nd Battalion, 27th Regiment of the Army and its attached platoon of tanks from the 2nd Tank Battalion of the Marines in less than an hour. 18 American tanks victoriously contended with 200 Mackian tanks and 9,000 Mackian infantry. Out of the 200 Mackian tanks, only 30 survived the battle. Out of the 9,000 Mackian infantry, around 4,000 had died and 3,000 were captured.